everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Palm Springs Unwrapped. As you all know, I have now moved up to the high desert to Joshua Tree. So we thought we'd kick off this episode. I want the iconic landmarks here in Joshua Tree, and that is this outdoor art museum done by the artist Noah Purefoy, born in 1917. Created this outdoor art museum from 1989 to 2004 when he passed away. Right now we're sitting in the art piece called the White House. We're going to show you a little bit of the 100 different pieces here on the 10 acres of desert land throughout the episode. But first, we're kicking off this first segment here in the high desert with an incredible artist named Rose teaching us how to do some sun printing. Here's a look. Well, hey, you guys, we are here now at my neighbor's house, now that I'm here in Joshua Tree, Rose. Now, you are a photographer and artist, Rose. Tell us all about this sun printing artwork that you do. Well, it's called Cyanotype, and I started doing this back in the 90s in art school. And when I moved to Joshua Tree, I thought, I want to do an art form of my own. So I took a 30-year break, and then I started doing Cyanotypes again. So now I'm doing these large format cyanotypes and I'm wow. so excited to be able to share it with you yeah. and we're going to jump right into it and we're going to coat some paper. We're actually going to put a um, UV sensitive emulsion onto watercolor paper okay. and we don't have to wait for it to dry because I coated some last night. There you go. And then um, we're going to, I printed your negatives and we're going to take some of my negatives and we'll make a Joshua tree print and some of your personal prints. All right. Well, how long does this process take from start to finish? Um, when the paper's already coated and the negative's made, it takes about 15 minutes for each print. So. Break it down for us real quick, just step by step. How's it go? So we're going to coat paper. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to mix an emulsion, coat the paper. We're going to put it in the drying rack. We're going to go on a little nature walk because we're going to do two types of prints today. We're going to do one that's called a photogram where we lay organic material on top of the UV sensitive paper. And then we're also going to do one from a negative. So we're going to coat paper. We're going to go for a short walk outside. Then we're going to come back and we're going to make a test print. And then we're going to evaluate what is the best time for our exposure today, okay. depending on the UV index. But fortunately, we have a lot of sun. Yep. And then um, we're going to wash it off and you're going to see your beautiful print and then we'll make a final print. It's such a beautiful type of art, Rose. And for those Thank that you. want to have one of these pieces, create their own pieces, they can take a class with you, right? Yes. I'm on Airbnb Experiences and you can also go to Rose Cephalou Photo. Dot com and you can sign up for classes there. I also do various classes at Las Palmas Arts okay. and I have a summer session going on at Idle Wild Arts. Very cool. We'll yeah. go and sign up for her classes. Amazing pieces. I'm going to go home and hang up my pieces as well. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. <laughs>
guy just over here working on my computer. Now we're actually in another art piece done by Noah Purifoy. You just got done watching us create those sun prints. Here is the finished product. Look how incredible that is. Everyone make sure you take a class with Rose and you can take these beautiful pieces home. Cannot wait to hang them up. Now we are here at the art museum. We're gonna show you different pieces. Let me take you a little bit of a lap around the piece that we're in right now. Old typewriters, computers, skis, guitars, pianos, all in this incredible piece. Like I said, done by Noah Purifoy. A lot of the artwork done in the 1990s. Now for this next segment, we're gonna head down back to the low desert doing a little bit of some golfing at nighttime. Take a look. Hey everyone, we are here at the Indian Wells Golf Resort. Four shots in the night, and here to tell us all about this incredible event is Ben Rodney. Ben, you are the Director of Sales and Marketing here at the Indian Wells Golf Resort, and I am so excited to talk to you about this incredible awesome. event, Shots in the Night. Break it down for us. So, Shots in the Night, right? It's really the only evening golf entertainment that you have in the entire Coachella Valley, and it's comprised of two separate elements. Where we're standing right now is laser putting. So it's comprised of seven individual greens, which are taken care of. They're real, first of all. And they're taken care of by the same agronomy team that manages our two highly ranked golf courses. So what you have here is some really nice putting. But if you look around, you see these giant poles with lasers and lights. And what this is, is gaming. Okay. So we've gamified putting. You can see that these folks right here are aiming at a blue circle. And it's all run on an iPad. So you can play, you can play uh, beer pong on with six cups, you hit them in there, you can do target practice. There's really a bunch of games you can play, so you and six of your friends pay 65 bucks for an hour, get one whole green and have a lot of fun, while at the same time, you have our incredible barbecue food truck, we have a full bar, music, um, we do have theme nights during season, no. so we do have a lot of fun here. <gasps> theme nights, that sounds so fun. Let's talk about the range, because the technology is yeah. from Top Golf. Right? It is. So Top Tracer is our driving range, and that is Top Golf's technology, and it's really made for an actual golf club's driving range. So you have a 22-inch monitor, so when you hit, when you strike the ball, it tracks the ball flight, the ball speed. So somebody coming here from say a really high elevation because we're pretty close to sea level, has an opportunity to adjust their game before they get onto the golf course, which, you know, they don't have to throw out the first two or three holes they play. They can really have a proper experience. Yeah. I love it because there's a lot of different games you can play too. Yeah. So it's Shots of the Night is comprised of everything you see here, the laser putting, the top tracer driving range, the food truck, and all the bars. And we do a ton of group activities here. As you can see, we're located on the Indian Wells campus between the Renaissance Esmeralda, the Hyatt Regency, the Miramonte Resort, and the Indian Wells Resort Hotel. Yeah. So this is a great option for all those guests to come out here, have fun, whether they're families or whether they're buddies' golf trips. We really cater to everybody. It is so beautiful, the space that we're in right now. And you said it can house 1,500 people in this Yeah, area. we can do events up to 1,500 people. Um, we did a couple of 500 person events this season and we're really looking to get the word out that we can do this. We have a team of hospitality professionals that run that running this place. We have PGA pros. Um, we have event professionals. If you look across the bridge, the lights are out right now, but the white top back there is our pavilion, which is an over 4,000 square foot pace with a 14,000 square foot lawn that do we do events for up to a thousand people out there as well my gosh lots of weddings if you can imagine hidden gem yeah i want to i still need to have my wedding so i'm going to be looking here ben this is oh we have to talk no we're going to be talking that'll be a later segment okay and i've just got here but i'm already having so much fun ben. awesome so excited to get to the range but remind people how they can get to be a part of this event do they need to sign up before what is that yeah look? no that's a great question so the easiest way to register for ticketing is to go to our website indianwellsgolfresort.com on the upper left hand side where you hit the hamburger we all know what the hamburger is at this point right yep. the three lines <laughs> it will drop down and there's a shots in the night specific page where you can book your tickets um, you can check out all of our menus including group menus if you're doing an event here everything's listed there so you can buy your tickets for however many people you're coming with and come and enjoy i love it well we've been doing a lot of talking ben you ready to go heck yeah all right let's, let's do, do it, it. <laughs>
Sally, we are here at the golf course because viewers might not know, but you played golf in Chicago, D1. Tell us all about your golfing life. I mean, I played golf for, you know, oh. since I was, since I could walk, basically. My dad really? just put a club in my hand. And then I was like, you know, I just, we just kept on going, putting me in junior tournaments, junior everything. And then finally you get to, you know, that point in high school, you're like, I kind of want to play this in college. <laughs> Did you, yeah. they just know, like, when you started swinging, like, okay, you got a knack for this. Yeah. Right? And then I was just like, it's all I've known. So yeah. yeah and it's like how my dad and I would bond. So oh, yeah. I love it. Well, you know, since she is a D1 golfer, Tally's going to give me a little less than it. Okay. And just shoulder width, basically. Yeah. Like, let your hands hang and then, like, put the club in your hand. Yep. Like that? Yeah. Okay. You just want to use your shoulders and your hips, like I've taught you, to go through <laughs> with your hips. And basically, that's it. See it, Sally. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go just a few feet shy of that. I think I can do just as far. Let's see, Sally. Okay, that's... Did it, someone hit my... Oh, that's, line drive. I yeah. was kind of aiming You know for what the, I mean? That's As long as you're advancing it in golf, I think yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Okay. Tally time. I like it. Tally, tell us your favorite golf moment in your entire life. What would you say? Um, it'll probably be when I was 11 and um, my dad and I were playing in a father-daughter, father-son tournament. Mm -hmm. And I almost got a hole in one and we won the tournament. <gasps> So no way! At, yeah. at eleven, did you guys do that tournament every year? Yeah, we did it every year. Is that the naval base? Because my dad was in the navy, so probably yeah, one of the best moments. Probably your dad was in the navy. Yeah. Wow. Did you guys travel a lot growing up? Uh, not too much. Like, uh, I think we only tra like traveled probably like, to Virginia Beach and then back to California. What? Well, tell your dad thank you for his service. So, where are you originally from, Tally? So I was born in San Diego, but my parents were both born in American Samoa. So they both moved up here when they joined the Navy uh, at 18. That is incredible. And then uh, what would you say is your favorite thing about being from California, growing up in California? Um, I think we're very spoiled with the weather here. I went to school in Chicago, like you said, and I learned very early on that people don't get the sunny every day like us. Okay, favorite movie? 54 States. 51st stage. Yes. I love that movie. Favorite TV show? Oh my God, Breaking Bad. Classic. Favorite meal? Sushi or poke. I would eat those. Yeah. Ooh, sushi. If that was the last meal I could ever okay. have. Poke like Hawaii poke without the like different flavorings of the yeah. poke of California. Oh, poke of like Hawaii. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Favorite dessert? Just chocolate cake and ice cream, honestly, in yeah, any form. Classic. If you could meet any famous person, who would you want to meet? I'd like to formally meet Tiger Woods. I mean, I've met like all the other golfers, but I'd like to formally meet Tiger, so. What would you uh, say to Tiger if you met him? Um, I'd probably talk to him about how crazy it's been to think that he's been like denied when he was coming up. Yeah. Uh, to get into like play golf at places and now he's like the GOAT. Who is your hero? Probably my parents, mm -hmm. probably both of them. Joint. Is there a quote that inspires you, Tally, or one that you live by? Probably this too shall pass. The favorite thing about working at Palm Springs? Uh, the people I work with, obviously. You, Olivia, Tim, maybe Carmela Karcher. Hey, maybe. Arsalyn, like just our team and us working together really hard. So yeah. Yeah. It really is a family here at NBC Palm Springs. Love getting to know you, Tally. Thank you so much for this get to know. Let's finish it off. Uh, favorite dance move? You got one? Oh, yeah. I just do the two step, you know what I mean? Okay, keep really, it simple. Keep it simple. I don't really I like leave it. out of this, you there know you what I mean? Okay. Hey. Mm -hmm. hey. Mm -hmm. throw, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. There's some arm movements. Okay. You're good. Do you ready to do no some one's going to question it. Yeah, let's do it. Can we do another dance? Hi yeah. guys, uh, Tali's gonna try and teach me how to golf better. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Tuning in for this.
Welcome back to the show. This is another piece done by the incredible Noah Purify. If you have just t- tuning in, we are here up in the high desert at this outdoor art museum with 100 different pieces. It was built 1989 to 2004. We might be wrapping up the show, but before that, we're going over to the Cultural Center where they're going to start showing some classic old movies. Let's go talk to Lauren. Hey, can I get two passes for the Film Noir Festival? Some popcorn, maybe some soda pop? Right our way. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are now here in the projection booth. You just saw the film noir happening there right behind us. And joining us is Lauren, the programming director. That's is that right. right? Yes, right, thank sure you, get... Chloe. Thanks for showing us the yes. behind-the-scenes look of how this all is put together. Break it down for us because you've got this machine behind you. Mm-hmm. How does this all work, Lauren? Yes, yeah, so you know we're in the projection booth. So this is where all of the magic happens. Um, and these, project- these projectors are actually original to when the theater was built in 1967. Wow. Yes, yeah, so it, it goes right up here. Okay. This is all the sound mechanism, and it travels through here, and we have the projector, the projection lamp, Whoa. and then it reels back down here. So a film will have several reels, and every 22 minutes they have to change it. Um, we, that's why we have the two project, the two projectors. Why every 22 so, minutes? Is that just? That's just because that's really only the length, because it's physical film. So even these big reels, it can only hold so much. So you have to keep changing it, and they're going to be working kind of, it's like a dance. So once this is finished, the others load it up, and they move over and start the other one, and they come from two different directions so through the kind windows. Of time it perfectly, right? Yes. So you don't throw off the, the movie that they're watching? Yes, there's a real art to it. Talk about what's happening prior to the Film Noir event. Tell us about that. Yes, so the week before... Before the Film Noir Festival, the Secret Movie Club, which is based in Los Angeles, they're coming out for their second 70 millimeter Palm Springs Getaway Festival. So they are showing um, three films on 70 millimeter. We are, they're going to start with Paul Thomas Anderson's The Master. That's on Friday. And then on Saturday night, it turns out there is only one rare archival print of Titanic on 70 millimeter in the world. It was from the Paramount Archives. Oh, my gosh. And that's going to be airing That's going to be here on Saturday. And on yeah. Sunday at 2 o'clock, they are showing 2001 A Space Odyssey on 70 oh millimeter. Gosh. Well, we are now joined by Michael. You are the executive director of the Palm Springs Cultural Center. You guys have been doing this event, Michael, for 23 years. It's May 11th through the 14th. So break it down for us. Remind people, what is the Film Noir event here at the Cultural Center? Sure. This Film Noir program was actually started locally. Um, Arthur Lyons, who was a big Film Noir fan and also a Palm Springs City Council member, started the festival and uh, really got it going. It took off, and uh, it's been going ever since. What types of films are people getting to see at this event? Largely black and white films from the 40s and the 50s. Um, Some of them will be restored films. Many of them you can't see anywhere else. Um, So they're not streaming. They're not on any of the cable channels. This is really the only opportunity people will have to see some of these films. You talk about the 35 millimeter. For those that don't know movie language or film language, what does that mean, Michael? We'll be doing several films that are actually going to be in 35 millimeter. And what that means is it's really film. You know, nowadays everything's digital, but back in the day you had either 70 millimeter film or 35 millimeter film. So we're going to be doing reels about this big and takes three or four of those reels per film um, to show a film. Lauren, thank you so much for giving us a behind the scenes look. Where can we go for more information about this event? You can go to our website at psculturalcenter.org. All right, are tickets selling out or what are the tickets? Um, tickets are going fast, okay. but so we do recommend everybody check it out as soon as possible. All right, awesome. Get your tickets, guys. Come check out the Film Noir. It's so incredible just getting to see it playing in the background. I'm going to learn more about this uh, camera stuff, how this all works. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this.
the dark clouds gather all around me. I sense a change is coming very soon. Sadness has a way it always finds me. I can run, but I can't hide or escape what lives inside. And no matter how I try, it will remind me. Well, as we said, everyone, this is the one and only singer, songwriter, producer, artist, the one and only former Broadway performer as well, Stephen Skills. Stephen, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you. Yes. Let's kick it off by just going back to where you started, because this is incredible. You were on the West End, the ninth longest running show called Starlight Express. Yes, we actually moved it into Germany, and it okay. was a, a uh, international company from oh, okay. 30 different countries, people, artists from uh, 30 different countries, actors. Wow. And so we all arrived in Germany, and I didn't realize when I auditioned for it, I was auditioning for something else, and then out of the blue, they called me in for this, and I did it, and I got the role. I and then they it. told me the last minute, you're going to be singing in the entire show in German, and you're going to be skating. And I never spoken German before, and I never skated before. Which is incredible, because I want to add in, you weren't just playing a character. You played the lead in this show, right? Tell the us lead. about your character, Rusty. The character, you know, I it was based on uh, loosely based on the little engine that could. Mm -hmm. But there was a real spiritual element to it. And the Starlight Express represented, like, God or higher power or light. Uh -huh. And so once I was able to, as an actor, to take it into that, Realm. It gave me more to play off of. Yeah. And I was someone, I'm the youngest of 10 children. We were very dirt poor, very wow. severe poverty. Okay. And I always dreamed when I was a little boy, I would always look up into the stars and mm. say, help me to get out of this life. And I want something better for myself. And the Starlight mm. Express sort of represented that, what I wow. had prayed for as a little tiny boy. So it was yeah. sort of like a full circle moment. Yeah. And, and through the show, he's always crying out to the starlight, which is the light, the, the higher being, the higher power, to give him the strength and the courage to, to be fully and completely who he is. So really, this, in a way, isn't acting as much because it really kind of felt a part of your story you played uh, this it, character. It actually was a part of my story. We're talking about your family life, so I think I want to kind of transition into talking about that a little bit. Sure. Because you have this documentary coming out telling us a little bit about your story. Mm -hmm. Mental health is a mm -hmm. big part of your family past. Can you dive into that a little bit? Yeah, uh, the documentary is called Becoming Whole, uh, but there's four generations of mental illness in my family. My grandfather... My father, I experienced some, and then I have a niece and a nephew that both are struggling as well. My father suffered from paranoid schizophrenia, wow. was an alcoholic, and he died very young at 41 years of age. Mm. And I struggled a lot through my, it started coming through probably when I was around 18, 19 years old. And my life as an actor, it's, it's a roller coaster ride being an actor and being an artist and then suffering with this mental illness. But yeah. and it's a disease like any other disease. But people don't quite understand. And I think people are so frightened of it that it kind of gets a bad rap. So mm -hmm. it's important to me to, anytime I get a chance to really spread the message and talk about my journey, I have no, I felt shame for a long time. And now I'm like, I don't feel shame. I feel like I'm a warrior. Yeah. I feel like I've survived a lot in order to still be here. And I, part of your story is all your songwriting. You have several, how many albums do you have? Uh, five albums. Five albums. And this is your your newest one. Tell you us a little bit about this newest album. Uh, I started writing this during the uh, pandemic. And uh, I knew that I needed to do something creative because after we got into like month three and four, I'm like, this is, I don't know, when's this ever going to end? And yeah. So I have a, a co-producer and we were able to produce a lot of the tracks through Zoom. We would get on the phone and I would, you know, we'd do some piano playing and we'd add guitars and that sort of thing. And then right towards the very end of the, that year, I went into a recording studio. He was in his his booth. I was in another booth. So we didn't even meet each other eye to eye for a solid year. We rewrote and recorded the entire album wow. during that time. Well, I'm so excited for people to hear this. Stephen, uh, where can people go oh. for more information about you? The best way is go to my website, stevenskeels.com. That's S-T-E-V-E-N-S-K-E-E-L-S.com. And you can find all the information about my upcoming performances, my albums, my past, my future. There you go. Mm -hmm. Your whole story. I'm looking forward to those future thank performances. You. Stephen, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.